it's Kat here, and I'm here to do the spooky book tag. So, yeah. So, the first question is, Corn Maze, what book had you confused from the very beginning? And I'm going to go with Anubis Gate by Tim Powers, because I, I still don't know what this book's kind of... It, like, has time travel, I haven't even finished it, and it, like, has time travel and ancient gods and this, like, really creepy clown... And I, I don't I don't know what it was trying to be. Is this like a time travel book or a Egyptian mysticism or is it just about a creepy clown doing creepy stuff? Because I don't know. Hence why I didn't finish it. I just stopped reading it because I'm cool. Question two is Haunted House. What book had the creepiest setting? And I'm going to go with anything set in Alaska slash Sweden in winter. Because for some reason, Sweden has um like no nothing good ever happens in winter in Sweden. Every single book I've ever read that features Sweden, number one is winter, and number two, creepy shit goes down. I don't care what book it is. Let the right ones in. It's the latest one I read about um winter in Sweden and it's about a creepy vampire and her pedophile pedophile uh uh guide person that she uses and they how they attack people in Sweden. So, once again, why would I want to go there? <laughs> I'll go to Sweden in summer. And same with Alaska, because I've, I've seen 30 Days a Night, and I read the comic, and I read all those spinoff books, and I've read, like, other stuff about uh, winter in Alaska, and I don't want to go there. Especially because Alaska has, like, two months that are summer. So, I don't want to go to Alaska. Not doing it. Question three is, Ghost Boyfriend, who is your eternal boyfriend? And I would go with Hannibal, but in the book, I, he isn't as cool as he is in the show, so I can't do that. So instead, I'm going to go with Wayne from the Wax and Wayne series by Brandon Sanderson, because I freaking adore him. He is hilarious, he is cute, he talks smack, and I just love him. I love him so much, and he needs to be the main character of these books, because Wax is okay, but... I only like it when he's with Wayne, and when he's all by himself, he's kind of depressing. So, screw Wax, all about that Wayne. Plus, like, you can always trust somebody named Wayne, like Bruce Wayne. That's all I got, but I'm sure there's more Waynes out there you can trust. Next is Caramel Apple Suckers, a uh, best Halloween book ever. So, for this, I'm going to go with the Blood series by Tanya Huff, because they're so fun! And plus, I think, um, book four right or like i think some one in the to tony not tommy tony foster series it, it's actually set around halloween so that's cool and plus these books are so much fun and they're so weird and uh i love them i love them mwah. beautiful very mwah. okay next is vampires and everything what is your least favorite halloween trope and i don't know what this means like does it mean book wise or does it mean like what you hate about Halloween. Because what I hate about Halloween is freaking candy corn. I can't stand candy corn. At all. Oh my god, do I hate candy corn. <laughs> it's just disgusting. It's like a powdery, sugary mess. And I don't like it. I don't like cotton candy either. And that's giant sugary mess. So, yeah. But, if we're going with, um, like, in book-wise, least favorite Halloween tropes or just Halloween-esque tropes, I would have to go with the tragic vampire who tries to be young. And this is like with Vampire Diaries and Twilight and kind of with this book, but not really. But um, I hate, like, why, if you're a 2,000-year-old, 200, or even a 100-year-old vampire, why are you going back to high school? Huh? Huh? Okay, maybe that's the trope. I hate high school vampire stories. I hate them. They're ridiculous. Like, why? Why would you go to high school? You're, like, 200 years old. I can understand going to college because education changes there. But why would you go back to hormonal, like, messed up people in high school? Why? Why would you go there? It doesn't make sense. Like, at all. <laughs> oh, and, like, freaking Vampire Diaries. All he does is what, write about a diary, like, write in a diary about his high school life again. Oh, it makes me so upset. Next is Pumpkin and Everything. What is your favorite Halloween trope? And um, mine's like ghosts and vampires and witches and dressing up. I like that. I like it a lot. It's my fave. It's so cute. It's cute fun. Halloween's like my favorite holiday. So, 
Next is Evil Incarnate. Favorite villain. Need, need I say more? Need I? Joker teeth. He's good. He's funny. I like that in my villains. Also, like, L. Not L. Light. For Death Note. I like him. He's so cute. Look at him. Being all evil. This Shikigami. Next is Ouija Board, a book that messes with things that you don't want to be involved with. And I, I'm going to go with another. Okay, I have the book. I haven't read the manga yet. But I already read this. And why would you mess with school curses? Why would you pretend somebody's dead in your class? Like, that's what the premise of this book is. Like, um, a long time ago, uh, this student from class three, the guy ends up dying. And so, because he was so well-loved and everything, the classmates were like, let's pretend he's still, like, alive and everything. And then starts his class curse. Why would you do that? If I was in the class, I'd be like, the guy's dead. Get over it. It's fine. People die. It's a thing. Like, whatever. But no, these students did a whole thing, started a whole curse, did all this other shit. Not happy. Not ha I would not mess with it. I would transfer out of that class so fast that you, I would just be a dust cloud of where I am, like in those cartoons and stuff. I'd be gone. Next is full moon. What character you turn into on the full moon? Which doesn't quite make sense, cause I ain't no werewolf or werewolf wannabe, but whatever. I'll turn into Skull Dugree Pleasant from the Skull Dugree Dugree Pleasant series because. He is a sarcastic old fool, and that's how I would be. That's how I am, actually, all the time. I'm just sarcastic. I don't give a shit anymore. I'm only here for the giggles at this point, okay? I, I just, I'm just a ball of sarcasm. <laughs> and that's what I love about Skullduggery, and I feel like we should get married, even though he's a skeleton. It'll work. It'll work out. I'm just saying, for kindred spirits, we need each other. We need each other. Next is All Hallows Eve. Your world and some other world has meshed into one. What world would you love to be swept away in? I know a lot of people are thinking, Harry Potter, I wouldn't want to be in that world. No, I wouldn't. Because technically, Hogwarts is set in our world, so I already live in it. So, fuck y'all. <laughs> I'm just messing with you guys. I'm just messing. I would love to be in Harry Potter's world, well, Hogwarts, but nah, I want to be in a Patricia A. McKelp world, because number one, they have happy endings. Not a lot of people die. I like that. <laughs> Two, her worlds are just so magical, and everybody just accepts, like, what's going on with no questions, and I like that. Like, somebody just shoots out a fireball, and people are like, dude, that's pretty baller. Like, congrats. <laughs> you know fireball magic now. That's pretty hardcore. And everyone's just super chill. Even though, like, every single one of Patricia A. McKell's books has, like, this ending that I don't really see coming. Or, like, ha the book should end halfway through, but it just keeps going, so you're like, what the hell? But, um, I still would love to be part of one of her little worlds, because they're fun, and they're short, and I like them. And they're all whimsical and magical and, like, really, uh, colorful. And that's cool. Next is Voodoo Doll. Uh, pick an author that author that you want them you want to take control over and make them write whatever you want. And I'm gonna go with Neil Gaiman, and I won't actually control Neil Gaiman. I just want him to produce more books, and he hasn't. So, why? Why? And I I was meant to pick up my American Gods copy, but it's all the way on the other side of the room, and I'm too lazy. So lazy. Next is Black Cat. What red flags do you get when you're reading a book? And now, this one's kind of weird because I would say insta-love or love triangles, but I read some good books with insta-love in it. Like, just pretty good books. And then I haven't read a lot of books with love triangles. Like, I can only name two that I've read that has a love triangle. And I know what you're thinking. Do you even read? Because there's books just full of love triangles. But for some reason, all the books I'm interested in do not have love triangles. So... Woo! I mean, the last love triangle book I read was Vampire Lestat, and vampires in this world don't have sex. Well, 
it got kind of got retconned with Pandora and all that, but whatever. And the point of this book being made, vampires don't have sex. They are just sex lustless people. I mean, vampires, demon things. So, yeah. <laughs> so I guess it would be lack of character development. And the way you find out lack of character development is by reading the story half, like almost halfway through to understand that there's a lack of character development. So that kind of sucks. But it's true. Like even with Insta Love or Love Triangles, if you have character development, you can still keep going on with your story. But if you're no, there's nothing. Like they're just a bland, paper thin nothing then you know why why do you keep reading not unless the story's really good because sometimes i read books that have like no character development but i really want to know the ending i don't know <laughs> next is witch's brew what book had all these different elements and it was magical and i had to go all the way across the room to get this fucking book and i should have just grabbed it for the other question but now i now i just had to go walk all the way on the other side of the room my room's not even that big, but there's, like, a giant bed in the way. I have to jump over that shit. <laughs> anyway. And that would be American Gods by Neil Gaiman. This book had almost everything. Not poems. They didn't have any poems. But this book did have everything. It has, like, different gods. has witches. Um, Technology-based gods. Different, like, a whole love story. A tragic love story. Some really good character development, some really poor character development, and t traveling, at, it has everything. It's great. It's beautiful. I love it. Love it. Read it. It's good. It's good. Anyway, that's the end of the book tag. Hope you enjoyed it. Cheers!